cardiology has traditionally been a very competitive subspecialty to get into, more so for international medical graduates. I remember when I applied for residency years ago, to me, cardiology felt out of reach. So when I saw this research letter looking at trends of percentage international medical graduates in cardiology, I was very interested to learn more. In this letter, the authors used the AAMC data to study if there are more or less international medical graduates in cardiology in 2019-2020 as compared to a decade ago. This is a very smart use of this data. Cut to the chase, and we find that about 40% of cardiology fellows in 2019-2020 were IMGs. It increased a little from 35% in 2019-20. Now, when we look at the cardiology subspecialties, more IMGs were pursuing training in interventional cardiology, electrophysiology, and heart failure and transplant cardiology fellowship compared to a decade ago. In fact, the rise in the number of IMGs getting into cardiology was mainly driven by electrophysiology and heart failure and transplant cardiology. Also, fewer IMGs were going into pediatric cardiology and adult congenital heart disease. When compared with other internal medicine subspecialties, cardiology ranked seventh among the medicine subspecialties with the most IMG trainees. Compare that with nephrology, which is where I am, and that has more international medical graduates than US and Canadian medical graduates. Overall, one in three cardiology trainees in US is an international medical graduate with interventional cardiology, electrophysiology, and heart failure transplant cardiology being the more popular sub subspecialties in 2019-2020. As cardiology fellowship is three years long, it would be interesting to further analyze this data and see if the IMG trainees in cardiology joined fellowship right after residency or after a few years of practice when they may have less work and immigration restrictions. If you are an IMG applying for internal medicine residency in an H1B program with an interest in cardiology, you may have to start working on getting all your elective rotations, research, and everything else to have a strong application for cardiology fellowship because you may be running against time. That is, you could do a three-year cardiology fellowship only if you get it right after three years of internal medicine residency so that you are within the six-year H-1B visa limit. Do let me know if this paper has changed your ideas about applying for cardiology fellowship. Write in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates in residency education. All the best.